So Blizzard just posted a new blog, which is called the Defense Matrix blog, which talks about how they're going to deal with the new player experience in Overwatch 2 and also how they're going to be dealing with toxicity and smurfs and cheaters going forward. So let's dive into this. So first of all, we have the SMS Protect. Um, they say the security of your account is important and SMS Protect helps verify ownership of your account in the unforeseen event of, of an account compromise. Similarly, if a disruptive player has been suspended or banned, SMS Protect makes it more difficult for them to return to the game. SMS Protect brings meaningful change when it comes to disruptive play. The additional layer of security is an industry proven solution in combating both cheating and disruptive behavior, further protecting your account from bad actors. Starting on October 4th, 2022, all players across all platforms, including consoles, are required to have a phone number attached to their Bina account to launch Overwatch 2. The same phone number cannot be used on multiple accounts at the same time, and players can't use the same phone number to create multiple accounts. A phone number can only be used once when making a new account and certain types of numbers, including prepaid and VOIP, cannot be used for SMS Protect. Even if you own a previous box version of the original Overwatch, you still need to activate SMS Protect to play Overwatch. Now, I know this is like a controversial um, topic. Some people are like, well, not everybody has a phone number. It's going to be very difficult. I think overall, the positives massively outweigh the cons when it comes to this. I think everyone can agree that Overwatch is an amazing game, but the big downside to the game and the thing that hurts it a lot is cheaters, smurfs, and um, very toxic players. With SMS Protect, it's going to be a lot easier to filter out those players because it's going to be another um, hurdle that they have to get past if they decide to hack on account uh, hack on an account or they decide to be extremely toxic. Like if they get that phone number banned, then they've got to go out there and get another phone number to be able to get another account. So I think overall, this is a positive thing for the game. Okay, so next is machine learning and audio transcriptions. So they say for years, our team has used machine learning to detect and prevent disruptive behavior, cheating and disruptive text chat. Our detection methods leverage multiple systems, including your in-game reports, to identify behavior that drives down the quality of the in-game experience. We're expanding our detec detection capabilities by introducing audio transcri transcriptions in the following weeks after launch. Audio transcriptions allow us to collect a temporary voice chat recording of a reported player and automatically transcribe it through text-to-speech programs. The text file is then analyzed for disruptive behavior by our chat review tools. Um, once the recording has been transcribed to text, it's quickly deleted as the file's sole purpose is to identify potentially disruptive behavior. The text file is then deleted no later than 30 days after the audio transcription. Um, this system relies on players reporting disruptive behavior as soon as they encounter it in-game because we do not store voice chat data long-term. This means you should report disruptive behavior as it's occurring in-game to give us the best chance at detecting, catching, and preventing disruptive players. Your reports matter. Player reporting is one of the most effective methods for identify and actioning disruptive behavior as quickly as possible. So I think, once again, this is another big positive. Um... I think some people are going to be worried about privacy on this, but I would say, you know, they're already tracking text chat. So if they're already tracking text chat, you know, I don't think it's much of a step to track voice chat. You know, just be aware that, you know, your voice chat will be on their systems and you should probably keep your voice chat in Overwatch to mostly Overwatch things. You know, don't go talking about your credit card number over Overwatch voice, voice comms or something. Um, but overall, it's a good thing. I think a lot of people end up being toxic in voice comms and then it doesn't really get dealt with because, you know, you can't really, they can't pick that up in an automated way um, through the report system, but now they can. So it, it's very often people will get banned uh, in chat from being toxic in match chat or whatever, but they won't get banned by being toxic in voice. And that's big because there's a lot of people in Overwatch who do not play because they want to be in voice com comms to communicate to their team, but they know they're just going to get raged at. So I think this is another big positive for the game. 
Okay, next is the first time user experience. I think this is gonna be a shock for some people. Um, so let's go through it here. They say the first time user experience is an introduction to Overwatch 2, specifically designed for brand new players who make their account post launch. Very important to keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this. This is only for brand new players who make their account after October 4th. It's not for any of us who already play the game and have bought the game. Uh, we want first time uh, user experience to welcome players more gradually to Overwatch 2, as we've seen consistent feedback from new players feeling overwhelmed by numerous game modes and heroes. New players begin with access to a limited set of game modes, heroes, and some other restrictions to onboard them more gradually. The first phase of our new FTUE rapidly unlocks all the game modes and the ability to chat in game. And the second phase unlocks all the original Overwatch heroes over the course of approximately 100 matches. So the big thing here, before we go any further, is that if you make a new account after October 4th, you're not gonna have access to all of the original heroes, not just the new ones. You're gonna have to unlock them over about 100 matches. So let's continue. Um, this focused experience eases new players into the world of Overwatch by teaching them about different modes, rules, and other high-level aspects of the game in an approachable way. Most FTU uh, UE restrictions are lifted while in a group, so new players can team up, team up with their friends at any time to play almost any game modes. That's really good. Competitive is the exception to this rule because new players must complete a specific challenge to access this game mode. Requirements to enter competitive are changing with Overwatch 2. We are removing player levels in game, so instead of having to reach a certain level, new players are now challenged to win 50 quick play matches before competitive unlocks. This gives new players time to, prefer to prepare for the higher expectations that comes with competitive, while long-term players don't feel discouraged by teammates who have less experience. In the process of unlocking competitive, we analyze new player skill levels to optimize matchmaking in a way that feels good to everyone. While this process helps new players join the fun, it's also an effective way to discourage disruptive behavior and cheating. FTUE is an investment to complete because it takes time to unlock game features. Competitive specifically cannot be accessed without winning matches. Disruptive players are unable to immediately affect the larger, larger community, with things like voice chat and match chat unlocking later on. Um, brand new accounts made by cheaters or disruptive players will all have to play through this experience, giving us the chance to identify suspicious accounts before they enter other game modes. FTUE was designed to make Overwatch 2 as a welcoming, approachable, and fun game for everyone who chooses to play. This experience only affects accounts made on or after October 4th, uh, or Anyone who played prior, oh, anyone who played prior will not have to play through the first time user experience. So again, I think this is going to shock a lot of people. And I think initially a lot of people are going to be scared. But, oh my God, we don't have all the original heroes. But um, it sounds like this is pretty much like any other free game where you unlock stuff, stuff as you go. And I think it's good because, you know, as a new player, you know, if you've got a lineup and especially as they add more heroes to the game, you got a lineup of like, you know, 30 plus heroes, you know, who do you pick? Um, who do you try out? Which ones are the hard ones? Which ones are the easy ones? Um, and I think for me, at least, the biggest thing of this is that once again, it's another thing that is gonna deter cheaters and smurfs from getting easy new accounts. Um, I think like on its own, it's not that much, but once you start adding another layer on like SMS protect, every single layer that we have that slows down cheaters and slows down smurfs from making new accounts, um, and also toxic people who get banned is a very good thing because to enjoy Overwatch, we need to get rid of as many cheaters, smurfs, and, um, toxic players as possible. It's really the big thing that holds Overwatch back. So... Any layer that helps with that is really good, in my opinion. Also, this is something that's not going to affect, you know, any of us who already play the game because we are, we will have everything unlocked anyway. So this is very specifically for completely new players. Um, next up is endorsements. They say that positive interactions deserve to be celebrated. So endorsements are being optimized for Overwatch 2. There will only be a single endorsement category per match rather than splitting into three different categories. And you will only be able to endorse players on your team. 
Through this change, positive players will have an easier time achieving and maintaining high endorsement levels. Our goal is that players recognize and aspire to be positive forces in our community, and we plan to award Battle Pass experience to players with high endorsement levels to show our appreciation. So I don't really care too much about endorsement levels, and I think anyone who has played this game a lot doesn't even bother endorsing anymore for the most part. I think the only way the endorsement system is going to be good if, is if it's done like League of Legends. So in League of Legends, when you finish a game, a specific screen pops up and then you pick someone to endorse. As it is in Overwatch right now, and this might sound like a small thing, but like you have to press a button to bring up a screen to endorse. I think if you put it in people's faces so that they have to pick one person to endorse, then the endorsement system will naturally get used more because like people are just going to want to click the person, get to the next screen. So there's a lot of UI changes coming. Hopefully that happens because I think that will make the endorsement system a lot better. Okay, next up is the pre-competitive match screen. As we mentioned, uh, player levels are being removed in Overwatch 2 with experience going towards leveling up your battle pass. This means portrait borders that symbolize player level are going away from all game modes in Overwatch 2 and competitive skill tiers will no longer be displayed before each competitive match. Players will have customizable name cards and titles to display alongside the in-game name and player icon. There are a few reasons for this change. We found this to be a pain point for competitive as some players were passing judgment on their teammates before the match began, causing the either explicit or implicit bias to occur immediately. We want this change to help players work together by eliminating this potential bias. Um, so once again, I think the initial reaction is this is a bit weird. You know, we're gonna play comp and we're not gonna see our ranks in game or enemy ranks in game or a teammate ranks and we're not going to see borders borders or whatever screw borders as a diamond border player i know firsthand that you know people definitely make assumptions um like if you have a diamond border and you're in diamonds like people instantly get tilted because they think you know you're not good at the game and it makes no sense because you're at that rank you're perfectly uh, you're perfectly capable of playing at that rank. Other way around, if you get someone who's level 25, you think they're a smurf, and you're like, oh man, we're going to win this game because we got a smurf. You know, it's the same thing, but the other way around. So borders suck. I'm happy that they're gone. Um, as for the comp skill tiers not showing, I think initially it's a bit weird, but I think it will reduce toxicity. Again, kind of same scenario as borders. You know, if you're playing in a plat game, and then, you know, you've got one gold player on your team or you're playing in a Masters game and you've got one diamond player on your team, people tend to be more toxic to the lower level player, um, which is a bit unfair. So I think it will reduce toxicity. And again, I think anything that is going to reduce toxicity is definitely good for the game. Uh, then we've got the ping system. They say the ping system is a new feature in Overwatch 2 that gives players the ability to communicate with their team without having to use a voice chat. This system enhances voice communication while also providing alternate ways to share information with your team. We also understand that some players do not wish to participate in voice chat at all, and our hope is that this system is valuable to those players. I mean, at this point, I think, you know, we all agree that the ping system is a very good system, and most of us are very happy that it's in the game for people who don't want to be in voice comms and also people who just want to relay information in a more efficient manner. Um, next up is general chat. I find this one kind of funny. I can't believe general chat is still in the game, but um, they say that the general chat in the game menus is being removed from the game because we found it to be an area where frequent disruptive behavior occurred. General chat doesn't serve a productive purpose, absolutely, and it could be removed without compromising the core mechanics of the game. Other chats will remain in game for players to use. I've played this game for seven years. I've never seen anything in general chat other than people spamming their stream to advertise it or people just randomly saying the worst possible slurs to get attention. There is absolutely no reason for the general chat and I can't believe it took seven years for them to get rid of it. Um, either way, that's all of the interesting stuff in the blog. Um, there is a little bit more in there if you want to go check it out, but I, I, I like to just touch on the important and interesting stuff. Overall, I think very positive news for you know keeping smurfs cheaters and toxic players at bay um yeah very happy with it super excited for a watch too guys